Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us to learn about research to inform the American Latino History and Culture Program. This work was contracted to the Urban Institute by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Next slide. First, we will cover a few basic details. Today's webinar will be conducted in English, but we are joined by live Spanish and Portuguese interpreters. If you would like interpretation, please click on the globe icon on your Zoom dashboard and then click either Spanish or Portuguese to hear that interpreter. For those who need closed captioning, you can select that option by clicking show captions at the bottom of your screen. The video and audio from this webinar will be recorded and available on IMLS's website for later viewing. If you have a question or a comment, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and we will answer as many questions as we can at the end of this briefing. Lastly, we will be using the term American Latino today because that is the term used in the 2020 legislation authorizing this new program. However, we acknowledge and respect the diverse preferences that people have when referencing American Latino life, art, history, and culture. In today's briefing, we will have an introduction by Lara Huertamigas and Gibran Villalobos at IMLS. They will provide background on the American Latino History and Culture Program. Following that introduction, we will present the Urban Institute's research, key findings, and recommendations to IMLS. We focus on our main final report, but also highlight other products and events that our team did for this project. And as I mentioned, there will be time at the end for questions, and we will share information on how to reach us afterward for more feedback. Now we will turn it to IMLS. Thank you, Jennifer, and hello to all of our participants. My name is Laura Huerta Maigas, and I am the Deputy Director for the Office of Museum Services here at IMLS. And I hope that many of you on the call are familiar with the agency, but in case you are not, a brief introduction. IMLS is an independent executive branch agency, and we are the federal government's largest funder of libraries, museums, and archives. The agency's mission is to advance, support, and empower the nation's museums, libraries, and related organizations through grant making, but also through research and policy development. We're very glad to be with you today and our partners at the Urban Institute to share this important research that really fulfills all three parts of our agency's mission, outreach and development um, and research and evidence gathering that will help shape the future of the American Latino History and Culture Grant Program. And I think with that, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Gibran Villalobos, who has been our lead engagement manager for this effort. Gibran? You need to unmute Gibran. I thought I had. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Laura. Uh, my name is Gibran Villalobos, and I was the project manager this past year for this project. The study will help us inform and advance the next phase of our project, which is to help launch the American Latino History and Culture Program. The results of the study will help us develop language, guidelines, and have a view of what is happening across the United States in terms of the needs and urgencies of museums. This will help us identify new goals and strategies and outreach and also being able to support museums um, in, in the field. So I want to move on very, very quickly to pass it on to the team so that we can begin learning about the results from the study.
Thank you, Laura and Jaron. Uh, next, we want to introduce our research team. The Urban Institute is a nonprofit, nonpartisan policy research organization based in Washington, D.C. With about 500 researchers, we focus on a range of issues across multiple policy areas. One example was Urban's evaluation of IMLS's Museum Grants for African American History and Culture program. This was a retrospective evaluation since that program was already ongoing, but it has parallels with the American Latino History and Culture program we are discussing today. This research has been led by my colleague, Mark Treskin, and myself, Jennifer Yoner Ney Castro, with a core team of researchers that included Paola Echave, Josh Fording, Sofia Hinojosa, Carolina Ramos, and Fanny Turones. Our research has involved a large team of colleagues at Urban that includes many members of our Latinx affinity group. And our team included consultation from two museum professionals, Patricia Lanes and Antonio Rodriguez, who have over 40 combined years in the Latino museum space. Turning to our research study, IMLS gave us five key objectives. First, our research was to inform the design of IMLS's American Latino History and Culture Program so that it would reflect an understanding of diverse Latino cultural institutions and intersecting identities. Second, we aimed to identify the potential universe of cultural institutions and organizations that could be relevant to or interested in this program. Third, we wanted to develop priorities for IMLS's implementation of this program to ensure it addresses the needs of American Latino museums and builds upon their strengths. Fourth, we hope to clarify how IMLS might work with similar federal programs to support, expand, and sustain the American Latino History and Culture Program's growth. And lastly, we aim to help IMLS measure the program's success for the field of American Latino museums. This work took place over a 15 month period from October 2022 to December 2023, and it included a review of over 250 pieces of literature in English, Portuguese, and Spanish, scan of 30 databases, including online museum directories, national nonprofit organization data sets, and federal grant award records, all to map the American Latino Museum space. We also conducted two community listening sessions in July of 2023, one in English and one in Spanish. We conducted an online survey aimed at American Latino Museum professionals who might apply to this program. And finally, we interviewed 40 American Latino Museum practitioners, collaborators, and funders, both inside and outside the federal government. The next slides show our research findings, which are organized into four themes, understanding the American Latino Museum field, funding experiences of American Latino Museums, growing the capacity of the field, and implementation priorities for the American Latino History and Culture Program. And I'll turn it to my colleague, Mark. You might be muted right now, yes, Mark. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. I'm Mark uh, Trescon, as Jennifer mentioned earlier. Thank you for joining us today. So our first section focuses on the American Latino Museum field, basically the who, where, and what of museums and institutions potentially interested in this program. There are four main questions that we tried to answer here. What are the diverse characteristics of the American Latino experience? How should these characteristics inform understanding of an American Latino Museum? What criteria best define an American Latino Museum for the ALHC program? And then finally, what is the universe of ALHC program stakeholders? 
to start off with a quote, we wanted to pull this to illustrate how nuanced this discussion needs to be in order to reflect the diversity of American Latino museums. As an uh, interviewee said, we're such a diverse community. All have different experiences based on what part of the country we are in, based on the countries our families are from, and we all have different cultural heritages. So overall, in our examination, we found a number of threads um, putting together American Latino museums. Compared to museums in general, American Latino museums tend to be smaller and newer, starting from grassroots community efforts, have less formal staffing, more likely to use part-time staff or volunteers, and may exist in non-traditional spaces. Um, this is both programmatic spaces, but also physical spaces as well. In our searching and discussions, we identified 270 museums, which are the ones that are basically core to a lot of our analysis. We divided them into three groups. The first group are museums where the core and central missions are around and focused on American Latino themes. We found 86 of these museums and institutions. The second group are other institutions where American Latino themes are part of the mission, but the mission includes other elements as well. We identified 20 of these. Together, these 106 museums are the core group of American Latino museums that we identified and focused on in a fair amount of our analysis. However, we also identified 164 other museums that have hosted exhibits with American Latino themes. This is focused in particular on those that have received federal grants and therefore showed up in our scan of federal grants databases. This group is not exhaustive of all museums that have hosted American Latino themed exhibits, but also helps us compare our core group to museums that are already plugged into and active in federal grant making efforts. This map shows where the museums in our database are located. As you can see, they are clustered in California, the Southwest and Texas, Florida, Puerto Rico, and the Northeast with locations elsewhere. And going from the location to the types, we want to say, and we dig into this in our report, is museums in our analysis reflect a wide range of types. A bit more than one third in our database are art museums. After that, about 50 each, this is out of the 270, are cultural centers or libraries, archives, and university research centers. Our sample also includes a number of history museums and historic sites, and museums that serve more specialized or multiple purposes. To understand the American Latino Museum ecosystem and the role of higher educational institutions, both as potential partners and as providers of training for museum professionals, we also reviewed Hispanic serving institutions or HSIs. We'll discuss this a little bit more later too, but the basic definition of an HSI is a college or university where at least 25% of the undergraduate student body is Hispanic. Emerging HSIs are those with between 15 and 25% undergraduate Hispanic population student bodies. Now, enrollment alone does not necessarily mean relevant museum-related programming or programming focused on American Latino themes. For our study, we did identify 50 universities or colleges that had an American Latino museum. HSIs tend to be located in the same locations as American Latino museums. Again, California, the Southwest, and Texas, Florida, Puerto Rico, and the Northeast. Finally, we wanted to have a sense of museums located in neighborhoods with significant Latino populations. So this map shows the location of all museums identified in a database of nonprofits across the United States, located in census tracts with one quarter, 25%, or 50% Latino population or more. Again, while these institutions tend to cluster in a few states and cities across the United States, we do want to stress how many we actually have found and how many there are. If you're looking at neighborhoods with 25% or more Latino population, there's over 1,400 of these, and there are 532 of these museums in neighborhoods with half or higher population of Latino. So we do this to highlight a somewhat different approach for identifying museums that could speak to the American Latino experience. This is through community acknowledgement and engagement, or even partnerships with nearby American Latino museums. 
So from this section of the work, we have four main conclusions and recommendations. First, the American Latino Museum field is diverse and growing. Second, this diversity means IMLS should pay attention to the needs of institutions that may not be a traditional museum, but nonetheless may be eligible. Third, community engagement and collaboration is key to the identity of many American Latino museums and an opportunity for many others Grant Review should consider supporting institutions doing this sort of collaborative and engagement work. And then finally, the quick reviews of HSIs and IMLS's own fellowship programming illustrate the value of identifying and cultivating professional development opportunities for American Latino Museum professionals. Next, we focused on understanding the funding experiences of American Latino museums, especially in the federal space. We had four main questions. What is the landscape of existing funding opportunities for American Latino museums? What share of American Latino museums applied previously for federal funding? What cultural considerations affect access to federal funding? And what features of funding opportunities increase accessibility for potential applicants to the American Latino History and Culture Program? First, uh, we show a graph that measures the median assets and revenues of museums in our analysis you can see that the museums whose central or partial mission was focused on American Latino art history or culture were significantly smaller than other museums that have only hosted an American Latino exhibit but do not describe themselves as American Latino oriented. Next, we looked at the museums who responded to our survey and asked for their top sources of funding. The top three listed were philanthropic foundations, individual donors, and local or state government agencies. Only a third of these museums listed the federal government as a top funding source. We also asked survey participants what limited them from applying to federal grants and the top three reasons were not having enough time or staff, not being aware of the opportunity, and feeling that the application process was too complicated. One person we interviewed said, I think a lot of Latino museums tend to be understaffed, and the thought of taking on a federal grant if their staff does not have the bandwidth can be overwhelming. And when considering whether to apply for a federal grant, the museum participants we surveyed listed the grant management requirements and the ease of the application process as two of their top three considerations. We also wanted to understand how Latino museums might use the funds from the American Latino History and Culture Program. So we asked survey participants to prioritize what they used grant funding for on a scale from one to five. Participants consistently indicated grant funding is prioritized to exhibits and programs, but they also used it for organizational planning, staffing, community engagement and partnerships, as well as improving their capacity to manage collections. From this assessment of Latino museums funding experiences and other research described in our final report, we extracted several recommendations. First, the American Latino History and Culture Programs application process should support the ability of applicants to easily search for and find program opportunities and see what has been funded previously. Also, the review process for the program should be informed by culturally relevant equity considerations. 
IMLS should consider using the program to offer strategic planning or seed funding grants, given that American Latino museums tend to be smaller and newer than other museums. And IMLS should offer culturally responsive technical assistance and engage in outreach that encourages American Latino museums to see this program as a key funding opportunity. It is also important that the application requirements be streamlined as much as possible. So we next turn to the question of capacity, specifically the ways that IMLS can assist museums to build and sustain their missions. This part of our research focuses on three question themes. The alignment between the goals of IMLS for the ALHC program and the goals of American Latino Museums. The assets, resources, and needs that can be supportive of applicants and participants. And also the question about performance metrics to assess progress and ways to make them valuable both to IMLS and participants. So as grounding in this section, we have a basic theory of change diagram for the ALHC program. It's high level, and I won't be going through all of the bullets and parts of it right now, but we want to highlight the ways in which there are three interconnected program goals. The first is to support the existing field. The second is to grow and strengthen that field and identify new participants and, yeah, and colleagues. And the third is to support professionals and professionalization. So I'll pause a bit briefly here to show the same slide in Spanish. This is basically seen as a diagram as a way to kind of understanding some of the main goals of IMLS and figuring out how to link them with content um, to the goals of the museums that will be participating. So in terms of capacity building recommendations, what our research stressed was the value of aligning museum grantee goals and needs with the goals of IMLS. There is natural alignment here, of course, but based on interviews and the survey, we identified five themes for IMLS to consider to best support the American Latino Museum field. First is the importance of connections, partnerships, collaborations, and networking. This is something we heard across um, our our, our conversations and the survey and going back to the listening sessions as well. This came up again and again. I also say the value next is the value of linking intended program impact to grantee goals. Again, this is an area of alignment, but IMLS should reflect on potential ways in which a museum grantee may think about goals differently or define them differently or consider different ways of meeting those goals that might be where IMLS is starting from. This is where you know, conversation and engagement and discussion ongoing will actually be really helpful. Again, reflecting on the sizable share of American Latino museums that may be small, new, or non-traditional, we heard a lot on the value of seed funding, planning grants, cost matching flexibility, and multi-year timelines for providing sustained support and capacity building value. Related to this, technical assistance, a range of partnership models and mentoring were also expressed as being valuable. Finally, contacts stressed the value of flexible and user-friendly reporting requirements, keeping in mind that there are structures within, within which IMLS needs to adhere to, but there might be some options to make it less foreboding and more easy for you know, grantees and applicants to basically do what they need to do. The last section of our final report summarizes the implementation priorities for the American Latino History and Culture Program. Specifically, IMLS wanted to know what ALHC program implementation priorities would be most effective, what considerations from other cultural museums could inform the ALHC program, and how IMLS could capitalize on other federal models to develop the American Latino History and Culture Program. This quote from an American Latino Museum collaborator 
summarizes what many participants we interviewed saw as much needed outreach. IMLS has to be proactive about reaching out to the Latino community to expand the pool and educate other non-museum organizations on how they can partner with an IMLS eligible applicant on a project. IMLS has to be inspiring and creative in their outreach efforts, especially to launch and make this new grant program successful. So looking across all the research we just presented and more that is described in our final report, um, we see four key priorities. IMLS should build upon the technical assistance it already offers for many of its existing programs, but tailor this TA to the interests and needs of American Latino museums. IMLS should consider best practices of other funders. In our interviews, we found some practices that both funders and grantees appreciated that IMLS could incorporate. The outreach efforts for the American Latino History and Culture Program need to be sustained, creative and flexible, and stay up to date on happenings in the American Latino Museum space. And lastly, much of our research supported the importance of collaboration and networking for American Latino museums, funders, educational institutions, and other interested parties. So, thank you. Everything that we just presented can be found in our final report. Um, it's publicly available on the Urban Institute's website in both English and Spanish, um, along with more details um, in that report than we could cover today. Our team also produced eight additional products in English and Spanish that my colleagues will briefly discuss next. I'll turn it to Paola. Hello, everyone. My name is Paola Echave and I co-wrote a research brief with Josh Fording, looking at the U.S. communities where Hispanic serving institutions or HSIs are located. We found that communities with HSIs had a larger Latino population and were more likely to have an American Latino museum compared to communities without HSI, making these institutions well positioned to collaborate with Latino museums and to engage Latino communities. We also found that Spanish is spoken by the majority of the Latino population and that a quarter of Latinos are immigrants in communities with HSI. Next slide. Where in the US are American Latino museums? This was discussed earlier by Mark. He produced a brief examin examining museums in Latino neighborhoods, which has been which has even greater detail than what was shown earlier. I will now pass it to my colleague, Fanny Terrones. Hi, my name is Fanny Terrones, and I co-wrote a brief with Sofia Nojosa, describing how Urban engaged with community of American Latino museums for this project. In this brief, we emphasize the importance of using data methods that respectfully engage marginalized communities and talk about the ways in which urban was able to do that. Um, we outlined these methods by first identifying the right audience, accommodating community needs, and relaying information with dignity. We also provided some suggestions for improving community engaged methods with similar populations in future projects. Next slide, please. What is an American Latino Museum? This was written by my colleague, Mark, who wrote this blog reflecting on what an American Latino Museum is based on ALHC program legislation and our team's research. Pass it over to Patricia. Thank you. Thank you, Fanny. My name is Patricia Lanes. I am a museum consultant and co-founder of Cultures and Literacies Through Art for the 21st Century. 
I co-wrote a blog for the Urban Institute with Jennifer and Sofia on the importance of American Latino museums. As you know, American Latino museums hold great value in preserving the diversity of Latino cultures across the US and in advancing equity for Latino communities. They also foster the development of Latino professionals and serve as a place for interdisciplinary dialogue about Latino priorities. Next, please. Thank you. I was also pleased to be part of an urban hosted panel with Laura Huerta Migus and Selena Barrios Milner, discussing the ways in which American Latino museums advance cultural equity in US communities. This webinar was recorded and is available for view viewing on Urban's website. Now I pass it to Antonio Rodriguez. Thank you, Patricia. My name is Antonio Rodriguez. I'm a, I'm a museum consultant and chair of the advisory council at the International Council of Museums ICON. As part of this project, I co-wrote a brief with Jennifer and Mark looking at funding opportunities for American Latino museums. Historically, the funding landscape for culturally specific museums has been very challenging. Through the research for this project, we identified potential funders, including IMLS. We also compiled some tips or suggestions for Latino museums who are seeking funding, but also for funders who wish to improve Latino museum access to funding opportunities. Much of these tips, especially for funders, focus on proactive outreach to diverse communities and being able to offer a robust technical assistance. Next, next slide, please. Another product that emerged from this work is a brief by Urban Carolina Ramos that focuses on the commitment to equity that federal funders of American Latino Museum have made. It describes equity action plans put in place in 2022 by IMLS, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the National Endowment for the Humanities, as well as the progress they have been making since then. Thank you. Mark, back to you. Thank you. Just trying to advance the slide here. So we've covered a lot of ground today. Um, we have a lot of materials and those materials have a lot more in the way of context and content and examples um, throughout all of these um, all of these things. But we wanna leave you with a few summary points, again, based around the four themes that we covered today. First is the diversity and growth of the American Latino Museum sector and field and the implications for IMLS as it sets up the ALHC grant program. IMLS has experience working with other, you know, somewhat similar grant programs. We mentioned the African American grant, Museum grant program earlier. There are similarities and differences here. And this is something that IMLS, you know, we, we've, we've been in contact and discussions with and our interviews talked about a lot. Second, and related to the first is the ways in which smaller and new, newer museums may have distinct goals and benefit from tailored supports. Third, we heard a lot about connections, both about the value of formal partnerships, but also of networking, knowledge sharing, and impact measurement that benefit IMLS and the museums it supports. And fourth, we stress the importance for communication. This includes grantee supports and technical assistance, but also outreach and communications more broadly and consistently. IMLS should continue creative outreach and support to identify new museums and potential partnerships that could benefit from the ALHC program in the years ahead. Finally, and again, 
thank you for your time and consideration today. You can reach out to us via the emails or the project landing page URL found at the left of this slide. And also again, thank you to IMLS and to the museums, institutions, collaborators, and funders who made time to participate in this study. The views expressed in this study and its reports are those of the authors and should not be attributed to the Urban Institute, its trustees, or its funder, IMLS. Thank you again for your time. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, it appears um, I, I would just encourage anyone who has any questions um, to please use the Q&A button at the bottom. Um, it does appear we have a few questions. I'm not sure they're um, who would be best to answer. Um, so let me just take a look. But please, uh, we have plenty of time for you to, to submit any questions you might have. Someone is specifically requesting if we could show slide 31 again. And I believe that might be the theory of change. Um, it, oh, yes. Okay. So I might, I'll be able to pull that up. As I try pulling that up, I know there's another question as I scroll a little bit. Uh, about the research disaggregating institutions that use um, lit, Latino, Latina, Latinx um, Museum of Latin American Art versus nationally specific uh, museums. We discussed that and we did a lot of work in our searches on that. Um, one thing I didn't explicitly mention is our final report has a technical appendix where we actually talk about our processes for doing that. And I think we mentioned further up our number of the number of databases we searched and how we actually did that both for institutional names and mission statements but also for grants um so that played into our analysis and searching in particular and maybe mark if i can jump in <clears throat> on that as well just as a reminder that all of these questions were guided by the language that was in the legislation that creates this new program. And so um, the language does not actually creates the field or even the name of the sector of American Latino museums. And so this work was really to explore how IMLS can create a working definition for our use that might be useful for the field to respond to. And um, I think those kinds of questions about um, content focus and community focus are going to be workshopped by the community. Um, and we will learn from that as well. I did want to um, address, if I can, um, another related question that came very early in the presentation um, around, um, Mark, the types of organizations, the, bucket, the three buckets that you talked about in terms of organizations that are clearly have a content focus on, Latino, Latinx cultures broadly, but as their primary content focus, those that were geographically um, in a majority Latino community, and then the third, those that have exhibited Latino content. And so just as a reminder that uh, you use that as a framework to then um, sort of winnow down. <laughs> what a functional definition might be, correct? Yeah. And I will say that was also referencing language that is in the legislation. If you all would like to look up the National, Muse uh, National uh, Museum of the American Latino Act, <laughs> much of this research was exploring openings that 
that legislative language um, directed us to. Um, I can pull up the slide shortly. And I was it was clarified that it was actually a question slide. So I will. Yeah. Um, there are um, a few other questions about institutional eligibility. Um, that I will address, but I want to make sure that this is the, the question slide that you're responding to the request for. Yes. And I did let her know, and I guess everyone knows, this is being recorded, so you can um, feel free to look at the presentation more closely afterwards, and we're happy to, to email anyone the slides if you contact me um, at jyahner at urban.org. Thank you. Um, there are some questions about institutional eligibility, I think for the future IMLS program that I'd like to clarify. Um, IMLS's work as a grant maker is defined by statute and regulation. And in general, um, we are only able to um, fund not-for-profit museum or museum services. Um, more of that will be coming out as we develop this program and eligibility. Um, but all of our funding, we can only make awards directly to United States-based organizations. We cannot fund internationally. Um, and so if you are not an eligible organization, it is important to find a partner organization that might be eligible. That is really a successful strategy across all of our programs. There are, have been a couple questions about the, the publications that we referenced. Um, and we have a, a single website <laughs> that I think I've typed in an answer, um, but it also appeared on our last slide. Um, it, I, it, Ron just added it too. <laughs> in, oh, in, wonderful. Okay, great. Please visit that webpage and you can find um, clickable links to all the resources that we produced. I'll also say that you can search in Google and they'll pop up um, and we have English and Spanish versions. So you search with English, it'll pop up um, the name of, you know, Hispanic serving institutes where in the US are Latino museums um, and you search in Spanish and the same will be should be true. But that website houses all of the, the products. I can take a stab at one of the questions that was asked as well, which is what are the next steps after the study? So in the upcoming year, we're going to be look as an agency, the IMLS will be looking at the data. We'll be looking at what are some of the responses that we heard in the field and addressing this in the forthcoming program. What this means is that as we develop the guidelines and the goals and objectives of future funding opportunities, we're going to be cognizant of what we have heard in the field. So stay tuned for more on uh, an, a potential upcoming uh, funding of uh, notice of funding opportunity, as, as we like to call it, um, which will be available on our website. Um, and if you would like more um, of a peek into what a current notice of funding opportunity looks like, um, again, please visit the website where we have sample applications of, of what we have done in the past, as well as um, what you might expect from the American Latino History and Culture Program. Maybe we'll do one last call for any more questions. Um, please put them in the q and A. I believe the other ones have been addressed live by Laura. Maybe there are a couple at the very bottom, Jennifer, that I might address. 
Um, there is a question here about resources on um, for opening museum or cultural events sector. Um, unfortunately, that is not a space that IMLS provides resources. However, there are a number of other resource organizations um, that do have that kind of information and support. The American Alliance of Museums um, is certainly one resource. Um, and then I think also organizations like um, NALAC and other arts and culture organizations are going to have good resources um, that can support. Um, and then there is a question I think that is related also around some challenges that we anticipate with dispersing these funding opportunities. As um, Mark mentioned, IMLS has been given this mandate before um, for other specific parts of the museum field disciplines, um, even naming them like our African-American history and culture grants programs, um, as well as uh, being a funder in the way that we are, the only public funder of museums, we have a special interest in reaching small volunteer run um, grassroots organizations. And so we really are uh, very glad to hear that the recommendations that Urban found through its research very much aligns with the needs that we hear from all types of other small and grassroots museum and cultural organizations. Um, Community-driven engagement, looking at lowering structural barriers to getting into the system and the importance of relationship building is um, are all messages that we hear across our work. And so that helps us know that we have some good lessons learned on what we can bring to this program from the beginning. Um, and we know that talking to the field um, in this way is so important and then being out in the field and um, being in conversation is also very, very important. Well, thank you so very much. Um, I think we have answered most of the questions um, that we could get to. Um, and uh, we have uh, hopefully shared the the web page and, and also IMLS will be making products available on its website as well, including this recording. Um, so we hope that uh, you all uh, enjoyed the presentation and our work uh, we're so proud to have worked uh, on this effort um, and for IMLS uh, and thank you all for taking time to join us today. And if I can before we sign off I want to give big thanks to the entire Urban Institute team on behalf of IMLS. It is important and part of our transparency practice to engage external partners to do this work, to make sure that we are listening and being responsive with public funds. And we know that this work has been thorough and done with a lot of heart and thoughtfulness. So thank you all for your excellent, excellent work and partnership. Thank you so much, Laura. It's been our pleasure. Um, and and Gibran as well. Thank you for your partnership throughout this past year. I believe that can conclude this briefing. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Thank you.